Hey, what is going on, everybody? East Tactics here. So, my RC car, my Alma Creighton 6S, takes these C5 ends. And so, I need to snip this and re-solder the proper, the proper end connection on. We're gonna do that today. First thing I want to kind of point out is this little soldering station is really cool. I highly recommend getting one. And this is basically, it was uh, $16.99. There's going to come a point in time if you're in the RC hobby that you're going to need to do some solder work. Whether it be for something like this or something else. EC5 battery connectors, the female. So I only, I mean, if you're doing two 3S batteries, then this pack of two will be great because you can do two batteries. I'll be replacing this battery here because of an issue that I've been having. And I'll tell you that really quick to maybe help you avoid it happening to you. So these batteries come with a the output for the balancing. And over the course of actually not that long I mean I've had my RC car for about you know three or four months and and I have not taken it out I mean I've taken it out enough times to, to have fun but like I, every time I put these into my car I end up strapping this down like this oh in my in my battery tray and I guess over time from this going like this and like this and like this and like this so many times the yellow cord down in there inside deep in there disconnected and now my balancing is no longer available for me and so I had to um, go and buy a new battery so um, so what I would recommend you do is instead of constantly pushing this thing down and like strapping it in just leave it straight do your thing with this and leave this thing just in the car straight as much as possible. You want to avoid this thing moving so much. Um, otherwise you're going to run into what I ran into and it's no boy no. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is snip. When you snip these, you don't do them together. You want to snip one at a time. All right, we're gonna take, if you've got some wire cutter or wire strippers, that would be ideal, but I don't. So I'm just gonna take a razor blade All right. Get this one out of the way. So another thing you're going to want to pick up is a set of heat shrink tubes. Um, and you can find these almost anywhere, but I picked them up at the same hobby shop. Okay, next you want to take one of your ends and you want to take For me, one of the best ways to do this was first and foremost, 
you got to get a little bit of and I mean just a little bit of of your solder inside of here so you just really want it to kind of coat the edges you don't want it to get filled up by any means then once you've taped the end of this thing and I've just got the solder gun kind of holstered Hopefully you saw that. Somehow I doubt it. Okay, so I kind of realized that I didn't really film that very well or I didn't get it on camera. But I got this one on. And I wanted to show you kind of the way I did it. And so what you do, I've got my solder gun holstered because I found that to be the easiest way. I went ahead and just kind of stripped off the end of this, this excess piece so I can show you because I didn't get it on camera last time. You take, you twist it a little bit, okay? Then, and again, I'm, I found that with it holstered, that it provided a little bit of easy, a little bit more easiness for me. Tinge the end, All right, there you go. Now, what you do after that is you take your end piece, and while this one is kind of jacked up because I did a crappy job on it before, you take your pliers, you actually want to heat up the side of the metal of this thing to a point that you can just push it in so you hold it on there until and then you just push and eventually with time and patience you'll notice it'll just um, sink in watch and because you're heating the element from the outside it takes a little bit longer There we go. See how that just sunk right in? It takes a little bit of finagling and whatnot. If you look close, it's pretty... I don't know. You got a bunch of... I got a bunch of crap on the outside of that one. And in order for me to get that off, I'm going to use my Dremel. i just grab my Dremel and the first, like, drill bit head that... literally just took a few seconds and while it might look a little bit grinded up as long as it's smooth or as long as it's not like jaggedy and sticking out then I'll be able to do this next step take your C5 uh, female and you look and you if you look close you can see One's got a positive and one's got a negative symbol. So the positive goes into positive. And you'll push this in. Ideally, if you've got it, if you didn't get any excess um, solder on the outside or have to grind off some of it, it would be a smooth. And it would just kind of push in and then click, and hopefully that'll be the case with the black one, because that one didn't do it as smoothly as I would have liked. But the black one should. <clears throat> so I'm feeling pretty good. I think they went in. I didn't get that satisfying 
click noise like you would want, but whatever. Now I'm gonna drag both of my heat sink shields all the way up. All right, well, success. So just to check it, slides in pretty clean slides out there you go and that is how you solder on a new connector end onto your batteries ideally you don't have to do this but if you do that method I showed you where you kind of keep it holstered and heat up the side of the the copper um, adapter seem to work the best for me and then once that thing is heated up on the outside to a point where it merges together what little bit of solder you have inside of it as well as the tint wire itself and then they just kind of sink into each other anyway guys now I'm gonna go ahead and charge this battery up and tomorrow I'm going to head out and we're going to do that bash video where I kind of just do a leisure runtime video to see how long my two 3S batteries run while my servo is being used at 6 volts and then I'm going to install the DEC onto my ESC pump up my servo to 7.4 volts and see how much better it turns, how much better it crawls and does the different things that I want to do, as well as if it impacts the runtime. I don't think it's going to be very significant, but it'll still be interesting to see. So anyway, guys, stay tuned. I appreciate you watching my videos. East Tactics out.